Hey folks, this is Mr. Lessard. Um, the next lesson we're going to be working on is involved with Newton's laws of motion. Um, as we talked about briefly in class on Tuesday, Newton's third law of motion was at play when we were talking about the seawall and the oyster reefs and how we could design a solution for that. Um, one of the things that we saw was that when the seawall is an entire flat seawall and a wave hits it, uh, the amount of force that hits the seawall and the wave is equal and opposite because of Newton's third law of motion. However, if that seawall has holes in it and it does not provide that same force against the wave, uh, some of the wave would be able to pass through and provide force, and some of uh, the wave would be pushed back. Um, so we're going to be looking more at Newton's laws of motion, uh, specifically the first and second law, which deals with balanced and unbalanced forces. Uh, so this is a big departure from what we've been talking about with food webs, so it's not super related, but it should be a good introduction, and it should be something you can do uh, without too much background knowledge. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this document um, to analyze forces. We're going to do an investigation using FET. Uh, so you're going to click on the link that is in the document and it's going to bring you to um, your FET simulation. Um, you're going to be using the net force simulation in the first part, and you're going to be using the friction section in the second part. And so you can see that here, net force section, friction section. So when you're switching over, um, that's what you're going to find. So we'll start with the net force section. Uh, what I want you to do, it's, it's there in the document, but I want to make sure that you see it, okay? Uh, I want you to check all those boxes right there uh, because I want to be able to know what the sum of the forces is. I want to know what the values of each of the, the people can pull and I want to know the speed at which it's going to go. So you can see I can put uh, a blue guy on here and it tells me how much force he's pulling with. It tells me what the sum of the forces is. So right if I put a red little guy here, their sum of the forces is going to be zero. Um, so we can see how they all have different uh, amounts of strength, right? The big guy has the most force, the little guy has the least. Um, and we can see if we go, we can track how the speed will change or stay the same, which way it will move. And basically that's the extent of the simulation. So you're gonna be following through these, um, these questions. Nothing that I need to totally point out to you. Um, so when I say use a math equation to show how the net force is calculated, I want to just give you a, a quick hint as to that. Um, so right, the sum of the forces is 150 left versus right. You can make this an addition or a subtraction sort of um, equation to get uh, the sum of the forces. So what I would think would be a good way to think about this would be to think about this like a number line where left is negative and right is positive, right? So um, the sum of the forces here would be positive 100 to the right, right? Rather than if I added another guy over here, we would have negative 50 to the left because it's going to the left. So that would be one way to think about that. Uh, another question here, are the, balance, are the forces balanced or unbalanced? Um, what I mean by balanced or unbalanced is are the forces going left and right equal? Do they add up to zero? Um, when I ask about resulting motion or speed, you obviously can't tell an exact speed on this. I want to know, uh, does the cart move to the left? Does it move to the right? Does it move at a constant speed? Or does the speed uh, get faster and faster as you do this? Uh, next, I'd like you to think about um, the same sort of questions in a few different scenarios. Um, and then I want to talk about acceleration briefly. In order to answer this question, you're going to need to know what acceleration is. Well, basically, acceleration is more than just speeding up. Obviously, acceleration is speeding up, but it's also slowing down, and it's also changing direction. If you're riding in a car um, and you do any one of those things, your body is going to be uh, accelerated one way or the other, right? So 
If your car stops really fast, you're going to be accelerated forward. If the car speeds up really fast, you might be accelerated back. And if you take a hard turn, you might be accelerated to one way or the other. Um, so when you're thinking about if it is considered acceleration, you want to think, is it speeding up? Is it slowing down? Is it changing direction? Is the type of motion that it has changing? Um, these are uh, pr pretty much straightforward. Um, when we get to the friction section, things get a little bit more uh, complicated. So you'll go here, you'll click down here on friction, and as you can see, you have a whole different scenario. Again, I want you to check the values so that you can see some things, and you're going to be using this slider uh, to add and subtract friction, right? So uh, we can see that as we go to lots and lots of friction, you can start to see it gets more um, fuzzy, like there's more, there's more texture, and when you go all the way to none, uh, we have ice. Um, so we're going to first start off um, thinking about with the friction bar at medium, what happens. And then we're going to think about um, what would happen with the friction bar at different levels, right? So if we have lots of friction, how is that different? If we have no friction, how is that different? Um, and so this is pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm asking here, right, compare the applied force required to move a 50 gram crate and the applied force required to move something more massive. Um, I'm thinking like if the friction is here and I want to move it, right, how much force did it take to get it moving? Okay, so I can't just click that a bunch of times and see it move. I got to go Got to stop it. All right. So if I can do that, right? How much force does it need before it starts to move? And so how much? So you would just kind of calculate that. You'd figure out how much it would need. As soon as it starts moving, that's your value. Um, compare the applied force required to move a 50 gram crate. Same thing. How is it different with lots of friction, medium friction, no friction? Um, and so this is going to be the, the beginning of a, a whole different unit. So if there are some things that you get wrong, it's okay. What I want you to do is explore, figure some stuff out for yourself. And I hope that this will be helpful in the next unit as we move toward learning about forces. All right. Thank you.